Alright. What's up, guys? Good day, good day. Alright, as so you see right here, many people don't know what these are. I'm going to tell you what they are. They're called Hawthorne Berries. So let's talk about the Hawthorne plant, right? By the way, it's good to see you all again. So, everybody knows that I'm not healthy, that I have heart problems and, you know, such other problems. So, I take things herbally, right? A lot of you that know me understand that uh, I've been on a long journey since, well, a long time ago. And I decided not just change the way I lived, but I decided to change how I ate. I tried to change my mental thoughts. Like, when, when I went and did uh, my right of transformation and, and, and I went and thought, you know, and this was four years ago, 2020, end of 2019, you know, I thought I'm going to change my diet, I'm going to change, like, everything, and I'm going to start doing my shadow work, I'm going to look into what makes me me, who am I, not just who am I today, you know, who was I born from, where did I come from, but who am I according to astrology, who am I according to biology? Who am I according to alchemy? Who am I? Who am I? And I found a lot out. More importantly, though, it led me into herbalism, living a holistic life, as I do now, right? And you know, and I've got proof of this, guys. Like I've got medical records, so I've got the proof to back up everything I'm saying. I'm not a doctor. I'm just somebody that's, you know, my body, my health, right? It's all about me. I know me better. And I do. I, I've studied who I am and where I come from and a long line of ancestors that made it possible for me to be here, uh, which is why I ultimately rely on the ancestors and spirit guides today to guide me through life, right? And so now this is very interesting. I want to thank everybody, first of all, for tuning in, for sticking with me over these 14 years, you know. Most of you that have been on my channel know that I started in Christianity. Well, I started in paganism with Spread Paranormal, uh, finding what the truth was in that, you know, and that scared the shit out of me to where I, I literally went into religion. And let me tell you something, there's things in the dark, guys, that most people don't want to admit that they're there, man, let me tell you. They're very much there, right? And anyway, you know, um, in the midst of uh, doing Sprad Paranormal, I got trapped into a bedroom with a demon. Now, this wasn't my first encounter, right? But it, it happened. Uh, I can get you in contact with Nitro, and he can verify this stuff, you know. Anyway, I helped him. That was another case. That led me into Christianity because I thought, well... If, if, you know, if these things are true, then then them things got to be true, right? Like, there's, there's got to be a good and a bad. And it wasn't until I come to hermetics and back into witchcraft that I understood what I was dealing with, the energy, the frequency, the, the other realms. Like, it wasn't until I, I looked deeper and took that rite of transformation and actually decided to change my life that I understood that I was given this knowledge that, you know, to walk my life out the way it is. I wasn't put on this path, or I wasn't chosen, like, I was chosen for this path. This path was chosen already for me by the time I got here. I'm just walking it out, right, from what I understand, from what I've found, right? And so, I'm in Christianity, and, and you know, you, everybody knows me, right? I gotta know the truth. I have to know the truth. I'm a truther, right? And so, I studied it. And, and it, the first thing that popped into my head was, why in the fuck am I starting in the middle of the book? Like, there's a whole beginning of the book. So that sparks my curiosity, right? Did that whole thing, and it led me into, well, let's go to the beginning of the book. So then I got into Judaism, and I learned Hebrew, and I started to do code searching, and, and, and started to live a Kodesh life, right? Like, this is, was my journey, guys, right? I'm doing tour codes, and I'm, I'm searching for the truth, you know, did the genealogy of the Hebrews, and, and you know, the documentary hypothesis and how everything was put together and I'm, you know, I'm just researching, 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 which ultimately led me back to King Solomon. 
and then I found out about King Solomon and the things that King Solomon did, how he lived, da 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 da, da and I took a very a lot of interest in King Solomon, which ultimately led me back into the path I'm in today, how I live, how I you know do my magical practices and, and you know sustain my life with nature and, and just the way I live. Let me tell you, it's different. Okay, it's hard to be different in this world. They either want to lock you up and extort you, or they want to alienate you and test you, or you know they want to fucking make you look like some insane, crazy guy and lock you away when you're only worried about your health. You know, like I said, I had a massive heart attack. Things had to change. I, I died. <laughs> like I literally died in front of this girl. You know, and her father and mom stepmom, I don't know who she was, I don't remember, but, like, you know, I was stubborn, didn't want to go to the hospital, and I literally dropped dead on the floor with a massive heart attack in front of this family, they lifelined me to some hospital in Colorado, and because I was stubborn, I lost three quarters of my heart, right, so, now I have heart, heart disease and coronary artery disease and whatnot, and three quarters of a heart, and so that's how we get to where we are today, right, that what I'm showing you here, right, because when I came back out of that whole journey and, and got back into studying witchcraft and herbalism and astrology and biochemistry and alchemy and biology and, and geometry and, like, studying these things, right? Because they all go hand in hand. Like, yeah. Anyway, right? So let's talk about this hawthorn berry because it's good for heart health and diabetes, right? Now... Again, I'm not a doctor. I don't have a PhD. I didn't go to college. Matter of fact, I didn't even go to school. I got kicked out in sixth grade. Tells you what you know, right? All right. So I do my own research. I take care of myself, right? Do my own testing. Go to the doctors for checkups when I need to. You know, I I get sick. I don't go to the doctors for an antibiotic. I go and get some echo, ech, echinacea elderberry tea, and I put some honey in. And that's my regimen. It works. I've had COVID twice. It works, right? Now, it might not work for you. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying. For me, because, I, you know, of my religious preference, I guess you would call it, my, my way of life, and what I believe, this is how I choose to take care of my body. It goes with the change, the change of what you eat. I always tell you guys, you are what you eat, right? This is your temple, that little spark that runs the neurons in your brain and your heart and whatnot. Like, that needs to have a holy temple, right? A Kodesh temple. So, you know, the Hawthorne berries. Now, see, as society develops and people's living standards improve, various chronic diseases are emerging <laughs> in the public. Right? There has been a growing shift away from pharmaceuticals to wild medicinal plants, traditional herbs, and ready-to-use healing foods. These traditional herbs and wild medicinal plants contain a large number of bioactive compounds. The properties of these plant ingredients allow them to be used in food and medicine. Okay, So let's talk about Hawthorne. Right? Let's, let's talk about this plant. What is hawthorn? Well, hawthorn berries are tiny fruits that grow on trees and shrubs belonging to the Kratos genus. The genus includes hundreds of species commonly found in Europe, North America, and Asia. These nutrient-rich berries have a tart, tangy taste and mild sweetness. They range in color from yellow to dark red. Okay. Now, there are different types of hawthorn plants. Some have big, you know, orange mylar fruit and some have little red berries. It, it, it all depends on what type of hawthorn plant you, you get. Like like they said, there's different, you know, different kinds, Europe, North America, and Asia. So, hawthorn has been studied for its potential benefits on heart health. Researchers have suggested that hawthorn may have heart benefits due to its vasodilation effects. Basically, it's increased in blood flow, right? Although conflicting evidence exists, Hawthorne has been studied for the following conditions. Let's, I'm, I'm only going to go over like 
I don't know, nine of them, okay? And then I think nine will be proficient. Yeah. All right. So let's do the first one. Antioxidants, right? Bam. The body needs antioxidants. So loaded with antioxidants, right? The fruit contains many polyphenols, a powerful antioxidant compound found mainly in plants. Phenol antioxidants neutralize unstable molecules. You know what that is, guys? It's free radicals that run around in your damn body, right? Well, it neutralizes them. When they are present in high levels, in addition with polyphenols in medlars, have many impressive health benefits, including their ability to prevent and reduce the risk of asthma, infections, type 2 diabetes, and skin aging, early cancer, and heart problems, right? So now let's look at this. Polyphenols are associated with numbers, numerous, numerous health benefits due to their antioxidant activity, including a lower risk of some cancers, type 2 diabetes, asthma, some infections, heart problems, right? And premature skin aging. I could use that. I mean, age is not treated me real well. <laughs> but then again, you live a rough life, it shows, right? I've not lived a, an easy life, guys. So let's, let's go on here. Though initial research in animals and cells is promising, more human studies are needed to assess the effects of hawthorn berries on the risk of disease. So that's, that's you know, one benefit. Let's go to the next one. Bam. Inflammation. Anti-inflammation diet, right? It has anti-inflammatory properties. Chronic inflammation is considered a major cause of disease such as asthma, type 2 diabetes, and some cancers. In some recent animal studies, it was shown that consuming hawthorn fruit extract could significantly reduce the levels of inflammation compounds present in the human body, contributing to a reduction in inflammation and systems of asthma. With the results of some studies, experts believe that hawthorn fruit supplements may provide anti-inflammatory benefits to humans, right? That's a great benefit, guys, right? I think so, because a lot of our pain comes from inflammation. All right, so the next one. Chain. All right, it may lower, what's that, blood pressure. Oh, wait a minute, that's not the right one, is it? Yeah, that's the right one. All right. And so in traditional Chinese medicine, the fruit is one of the foods that are often recommended to support the treatment of high blood pressure, right? Animal studies have found that hawthorn berries act as a neutral vasodilator vasodilator, helping to relax constricted blood vessels in the body, therefore aiding in lowering high blood pressure levels. In addition, when people with mild hypertension taking about 500 milligrams of hawthorn berry extract per day can significantly reduce their dialectic blood pressure. Okay, In another 16-week study in nearly 80 people with high blood pressure and type 2 diabetes, those who took 1,200 milligrams of hawthorn berry extract had better improvements in blood pressure readings than those who were in the placebo group. Fascinating, right? Just fascinating. So let's go to the next one. Oh, I must have missed a picture. <laughs> All right, well, let's go back to this one. I'm going to have to change that. Yeah, all right. I missed the cholesterol levels and the blood pressure. All right, anyway. So, it may reduce blood cholesterol levels as well. Using hawthorn fruit extract has the ability to improve your food, your fat blood. Wait a minute. No, because I had that in here. Hold on, guys. I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah. There you go. I knew it. I knew I had it. All right. <laughs> All right. Bear with me because it's. I, hang on, I'm not used to this again. 
But anyway, using hawthorn fruit extracts has the ability to improve your blood fat. Normally, triglycerides and cholesterol are the two main types of fat in your blood. At normal levels, they're perfectly healthy and play an important role in hormone production and the transport of nutrients around the body. However, when blood lipids are out of balance, especially low levels of good cholesterol, HDL, and high triglycerides, it can cause conditions such as atherosclerosis or blood clots. The accumulation of plaque in the blood vessels. If, this, if these plaque, plaques continue to build up over time, it can completely block blood vessels and lead to a heart attack or stroke, right? Which is most likely what I have coronary artery disease, plaque of the buildup of the arteries. And so this would be very good for me. And this is why I researched it, right? So in a test on rats, when they were given hawthorn berry extract, the levels of total cholesterol, LDL, bad cholesterol, as well as triglyceride levels in the liver were 28 to 47% lower. Right? That's not all. because it's also used to aid in digestion. The fruit and the extracts of hawthorn have been used to aid in the treatment of digestion problems, especially stomach aches and indigestion. This berry contains a lot of fiber, which helps to support the digestive system by reducing constipation and simulating the growth of beneficial intestinal bacteria, gut bacteria. And gut bacteria are considered, to, considered the core for maintaining a healthy digestive system. Therefore, nutrients recommended that people with slow digestion should add fiber from hawthorn fruit to stimulate the digestive system to work more efficiently. In addition, one animal study showed that consumption of hawthorn berry extract significantly reduced the transit of food in the digestive system. That is, when food enters the body, it will move faster through the digestive system, thereby reducing indigestion, protecting the stomach similar to an anti-ulcer drug, right? All right, and then we've also got anti-aging. It may have anti-aging properties, right? Hawthorn berries may help prevent premature skin aging caused by collagen degradation due to excessive sun or ultraviolet light exposure. The fruit can even effectively prevent hair loss and promises to be an indispensable ingredient for future hair care products. I, I can use that. That's why I would have had them going bald, right? Shh, don't tell anybody, but yeah. I could use that too, right? This I'm telling you, this herb is like, <laughs> go get it, right? All right. And so, uh, one test tube study found that a mixture of hawthorn and ginseng extract could prevent signs of aging by inhibiting wrinkle formation and increasing skin moisture. Research suggests that this effect may be due to the hawthorn berry's antioxidant content. Nevertheless, research in this area is limited and more human studies are needed. Next we have, it reduces anxiety. Hawthorn has a very mild sedative effect, helping to reduce symptoms of anxiety when using hawthorn berry extract, oh, redu relieve symptoms of anxiety. So when, re when using hawthorn berry extract, it can help you feel more relaxed and less anxious. Compared with the use of traditional anti-anxiety medicines, the fruit causes fewer side effects and it has been studied as a potential treatment for central nervous system disorders such as anxiety or depression. If you want to add the fruit to your diet, to manage anxiety symptoms, you should not stop any medications you are taking. Rather, talk specifically with your doctor. Always talk to your doctor. Don't don't just be like, ah, just start doing your own thing. Especially if you haven't researched this said herb, right? Be responsible. Be responsible, guys, right? And so also, not that one, we want this one. Use to treat heart failure. 
Hawthorne fruit is often used together with medications to treat heart failure. In a recent review, people who took Hawthorne berry extract along with heart failure medications significantly improved heart function and exercise tolerance. In addition, they also felt less short of breath and fatigued after consuming Hawthorne berry extract. People with heart failure often recommend by nutritionists to use medlar or the fruit along with current medications. However, the minimum effective dose of Hawthorne berry extract for people with heart failure is 300 milligrams per day. Typical dosage is from 250 to 500 of Hawthorne fruit extract. Take three times a day, ideally. You should still consult your doctor to determine the right dosage for your current health condition. Again, very important. Always consult your doctor, right? And so, Hawthorne is also easy to add to your diet, guys. Hawthorne berry may be difficult to find at your local grocery store. However, you may be able to find it at like farmers markets and specialty health stores and little Amish places. Like, you know, you can add Hawthorne to your diet in many ways. You can search for Hawthorne berries at farmers markets, grocery stores, or buy them online. This fruit is very versatile and can be flexible, incorporated into your diet in a variety of ways, including direct consumption. Fresh Hawthorne fruit usually is a slightly sour, sweet taste, but it can be used as a snack during the day. Make tea. You can buy ready-to-drink tea or make your own using the fruits, dried leaves, and flowers of the gardenia plant. Making jams and desert desserts. Many places use Hawthorne berries to make jams, syrups, or fillings, vinegar, or and alcohol. Hawthorne berries can also be fermented, fermented to make a delicious adult beverage or made vinegar to add to salads. Supplements. You can completely supplement the fruit in a pill, powder, or liquid form, which is extremely convenient. Supplements from Hawthorne berries usually include the berries along with the flowers and the leaves. However, some, some varieties, including only the flowers and leaves of the hawthorn, as they are a more concentrated source of antioxidants than the berries. Okay, so more the leaves and the flowers, less the berries. And so you get into this when you start to understand the plants. It's not always the fruit that's more potent. Sometimes it's the leaves, the vein in the leaves. It could be the stem or even the roots, right? Fascinating, guys. This is fascinating. So, when we look at Hawthorne, right, are Hawthorne berries poisonous to humans? Well, Hawthorne berries are not poisonous, however. The plant does contain a chemical called amygod amygdalin, which can cause cyanide toxicity at high doses, right? So, a person should always talk with a doctor for further advice before consuming any Hawthorne berries. Furthermore, research in rodents suggests that compounds in hawthorn berries could enhance the production and activity of digestive enzymes, namely those needed for the digestion of fatty and protein-rich foods. So different brands and forms of hawthorn supplements have varying dosing recommendations. Typical dosages are 250 to 500 milligrams three times daily. However, research has yet to determine an optimal effective dose. So keep in mind that when the Food and the Drug Administration, the FDA, regulates dietary supplements like Hawthorne under a less strict set of regulations than over-the-counter prescription medications, therefore, always make sure to buy from a reputable source. Look for products that have received a seal of approval from the independent organizations that assess supplement effectiveness and quality, such as the United States Pharmacopoeia, USP or the NSF International or Consumer Lab or you know, a trusted valued source. Next, let's get into herbal magic. Now this is even fascinating, right? Because now we're going from how it can help us, you know, in our diet and whatnot. Now we're going into the herbal, the magic, the mysticism, right? Yeah. All right. And so now let's look at this. Cretaceous oxycantha, okay, which is the Hawthorne, has folk names, has bread and cheese tree, 
jaxels, hogthorn, halves, hall, hazels, half, ladies' meat, may, may blossom, may bush, may flower, quick, thorn, and tree of chastity. All right, these are all the other names associated to it. By gender, its gender is masculine. The planet that rules it is Mars. The element that incides it is fire. Now, it's seen by three Ds. Okay, it's associated with three deities. Them deities being Cardia, Flora, and Haman. Goddess Cardia, Goddess Flora, and the god Haman. Right? And so the powers of the Hawthorne plant is fertility, chastity, fishing magic, and happiness. Ritual uses. Let's talk about some of the ritual uses of Hawthorne. Many of you guys that, that practice magic are already going to know this. So some of you newbies will be surprised at this. I know I was when I first read it because, like I said, I didn't know much about Hawthorne until now. Right? Hawthorne has long been used to increase fertility. Because of this power, it has incorporated into weddings, especially those that are formed in the spring. The leaves, curiously enough, are also used to enforce or maintain chastity or celibacy. The leaves are placed beneath the mattress or around the bedroom for this purpose. Carried in a sachet on a fishing trip, Hawthorne ensures a good catch. And worn or carried, it promotes happiness in the troubled, the, the depressed, or the sad. Hawthorne protects against lightning. And in the house in which it resides, no evil ghost may enter it. As it also is a powerful, as it's also powerful for protection against damage to the house and against storms. The Romans placed Hawthorne in cradles to guard the child from evil spirits and spells. In the past, most witches' gardens contained at least one Hawthorne hedge. So, the Hawthorne is also sacred to the fairies, guys. Especially you guys that you don't know, believe in the fairies. Like, take note. And is part of the tree fairy triad of Britain, the oak, the ash, and thorn. And where all three trees grow together, it is said that one may see the fairies. All right. Ways to make it in edible uses. The fruit are edible raw or cooked, but are more, present, are more pleasant when cooked as a jam or a jelly. They can be dried and ground for adding to breads. Young shoots are good eaten raw. The dried leaves make a pleasant tea and use the flowers for syrups and puddings. Like I said, guys always research this. Don't just go and say, oh, and then, you know, make sure you know the plant. All right. So that's a ways to make it edible. That's ways to, you know, incorporate it into your magic. The conclusion is the use of hawthorn berries is considered safe for most people. However, in rare cases, consumption of hawthorn berries may cause mild nausea, dizziness, abdominal pain, sweating, headaches, I feel like a fucking pharmacopoeia commercial, <laughs> fatigue, palpitations, insomnia, agitation, or nosebleed. All right, them, them things are mild, considering to what I've seen in most. <laughs> in addition, hawthorn has a strong effect on the heart so it may it may affect the action of some medicines therefore if you are taking medications for heart disease cholesterol or blood pressure you should absolutely talk to your doctor before consuming any medlar or uh, supplement Hawthorne supplement right noted make that noted and so now I know you're thinking this herb or this tree this plant as a deity Yes, guys, yes. Many plants, herbs, and trees do. Soon, I'm hoping people see how closely we are with astrology, the nature of this world. We are made from star stuff, guys. And what grows and populates this earth has the potential to sustain, heal, or, that's right, even hurt us. It's a balance. And within that balance, you find stability and power. And so let's look at these three deities, right? Cardia. Goddess Cardia, right? All right. 
was the ancient Roman goddess of the hinge. Roman doors being hinged or hung on pivot hinges, the Augustan, the Augustan poet Ovid conflates that her with another archaic goddess named Carna, whose festival was celebrated on the cleanse of June and for whom he gives the alternate name Crane or Crania, a nymph. Ovid's conflation of the goddess is likely to have been his poetic invention, but it also has been con conjectured that Carna was a contracted from the Cardinia, and at the minimum, Ovid was observing that their traditions were Crujan. Okay, so this ultimately stems. She ultimately goes back to the Latin or the Roman mythology, who is goddess Cadia or Carta. Now let's go to the next one. Let's go to the goddess Flora. Okay, another Roman goddess of flowers in spring, a symbol for nature and flowers, especially the Mayflower. Hawthorne. While she was otherwise a relatively minor figure in Roman mythology, being one among several fertility goddesses, her association with the spring gave her particular importance at a coming of springtime, as did her role as goddess of youth. She was one of the 15 deities who had their own flamin, the floralist, or one of the means morals. Her Greek counterpart is Chloris. Okay. So she was one of the 15 deities. Let's go to the god. Now we have a god, not a goddess. God Haman. Ancient Greek deity. Right. I'm calling him Haemonius. In Hellenistic religion is a god of marriage ceremonies who inspires feasts and song related to the god's name of Hamonius is a engineer of Greek lyric poetry that was sung during the procession of the bride to the groom's house in which the god is addressed in contrast to the Ippolithium which is sung at the nectal threshold he is one of the winged love gods the Eretes or like Cupid right Y'all picture Cupid? Well, here you go. The God Haman. It's kind of like a Cupid. Right? And so, again, we go back to, guys, my research. What I've been through. What I've done. You know. It's. I've been on a long journey. And, like, you know. As you see it. Right here. Michael's medical marijuana research. And it didn't just. It's not just cannabis, guys. Like, uh, yes, I started to use cannabis for my pain, and it didn't work. So I had to use pain pills, unfortunately, for a while. I uh, didn't like that, which was more of an emphasis to push me to get off of, you know, get off of the pills. Uh, and I did. I, I died twice trying to get off of these things. So, you know, when I tell you guys that I'm not in good shape, right? Like, let's look here. Here's some of my medical conditions. Abnormal nuclear stress test, acute peringitis, bipolar disease, uh, bulging lumbar discs, CAD, coronary artery disease, uh, chronic back pain, right? Decreased cardiac injection fractures, that's with my heart. Exercise-induced asthma. I, I had gingivitis, but I got my teeth pulled, as you guys know. You can see it in the videos. Bipolar disorder, sleep apnea, history of shingles, um, an impaired fasting glucose, insomnia, left hip pain, right? Low back pain with sciatica, low back pain with sciatica, left and right. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Medical end, whatever that is. Memory difficulty, guys. That's why I got to read these things to you because I don't remember them, right? Nicotine dependence, which I'm slowly working on getting off of. Periodontal disease, which was, you know, the teeth. I got my teeth removed. Now I have no teeth. You know, right hip pain, um, scoliosis. I had shingles from being bit by a raccoon. Uh, sinus bradycardia, tooth decay. History of previous stent placement. History of uh, elevation myocardial infraction. Like, guys, what I'm telling you, I'm not. I wasn't. I'm not in good shape. Right. This was my medication list. This is what they had me on. Aspirin 
one tablet a day, erythromycin, because I think this was around the time I got bit by that raccoon and I needed an antibiotic. This was like 2015, yeah, 2015. Cyclobenzaprine for muscle spasms. This was for insomnia, because, you know, you guys know I can't sleep. And then ibuprofen, one tablet, right? And then as time went by and I had a fellow check, of, you know, check up, well, bipolar disorder is currently being treated with THC. You know, three times a day, I started to change things, right? Chronic low back pain, refill of oxycodone every four to six hours. That's too much, 180 of them. I was like a fucking zombie. I didn't like it, right? Follow up one month for pain management. Patient is here to follow up on chronic pain and bipolar disorder. Patient rates their health as poor. My health is poor. I have an abnormal nuclear stress test, right? Like, I don't lie to you guys. I am not in good health, right? And so when I tell you I'm only walking this earth because the gods allow me, I'm not shitting you. But I can do my part in researching things that make to help my temple better, help to make me better. Because nobody's worried about my health. Everybody's like, oh, yeah. No, they're not. I'm worried about my health. Nobody else is worried about it. My kids may be, but they're, you know, they got their own life going on. I mean, don't need to worry about dad, right? And so I don't do this because I want to. All right, maybe I do, but I do this because everywhere I go, in everything I do, no matter who I'm with, when I start talking, people are like listening. I've had Amish people, God, good God-fearing people, sit down and listen to me. Now, I'm all dressed up in dark clothing, skulls and rings all over my hands, you know, pegging stuff, you know. And this lady tells me, I was listening to what you were talking about. It's an Amish lady, or maybe a Mennonite, I don't know, one of them. Listening to what you were talking about is pretty interesting. But I'd like to hear more, you know. Like, I, I, I go to a flea market looking for rings or something, and the guy's like, yeah, i got something special over here, you know, you might like. And we start talking about hermetics and sacred geometry and astrology and alchemy, and it's like, I want to know more. So I sit there for an hour and talk to those guys, you know what I mean? And I, I show them what I'm living out, you know. Like, I'm not just preaching this shit to you guys. I'm living this shit out, have been for quite some time now. Started it in 2010, put it in, you know, put the herbalism part of it into effect in 2019. Like, it took me that long to research and do the trial and error. I had to go through Christianity and rabbiism, and Judaism, and sacred search codeism. And, like, you know, I had to take the path to become who I am today. And who am I today? Well, you guys see it. Some of know me as the divine sorcerer. Some of know me as Dr. Potnist. Some Ians know me as Skulls. And that's my true original nickname, Skulls. That's why I got Skulls all over me. I was given that name at a very young age. But then once I got into magic and mysticism and, and you know, the paranormal, I, I literally became the Divine Sorcerer. Before that, I was known as Dr. Potnist. I was doing my thing, research and... and as the thing says, using alternative medicine today for a better tomorrow. And that was my outlook in 2010, still my outlook today. I have no problem with anybody. I'm not trying to stomp on anybody's toes. I'm just trying to show people that are interested in my way of life. Because let me tell you, when you live different than society, when you live different than people, they look at you strange, like you're some kind of alien or unnatural character. Buddy, I'm just the same as you. I just choose to live different. I choose to take care of my body. I choose to take care of my mind. And I choose to feed and nurture my soul. Now, most of you think that's some kind of spiritual. No, it's the spark in here running the neurons in your brain and keeping your heart pumping. That's your soul. And that's why when you die, you don't remember nothing. You're gone. You have nothing. Trust me, I've died. I've been there twice. Okay? Bigger and better things when you leave. Energy doesn't die. It just transforms. Guys, I'm learning so much and I want to thank you. Uh, it's because of you that I'm learning, right? And so, 
this video is probably going to irk some people, and I'm sorry, I'm not trying to irk. Like, like I think I said, I don't have a problem with pharmaceutical companies. They can do whatever they want, right? I, I still go to doctors. I still get, you know, pharmaceuticals. It's just that when it comes to my health, instead of them giving me all kinds of stuff that makes me fat or makes me feel like a zombie or just, you know, I felt like an experiment. Instead of going through all that, I don't want to be an experiment. I want to take things that I know that are going to better myself, better my health, better my mindset, better me as a, a different, you know, better person. Guys, I'm going to be bringing a book out hopefully here soon. I'm working on it. It's going to be the, the fall of a broken man to the rise of the divine sorcerer. I have a lot. I have a lot to say. And I have a lot to show. I've got the proof. I've got the medical records. I've got the footage on video. I've had a hard life, and I've tried being extorted for the way I fucking live, which is ridiculous. Somebody out there someday will help me, or they won't. No biggie. But you know what? The videos that I make, the truth that I tell, and the proof that I show, I'm walking living proof. There's a better way. There is a God or gods, or higher power, or whatever. You'd be stupid to think that we're the only ones in the universe. It's a big place, right? So think about it. We're made from star stuff. Every one of us have the power, the ability. Some of us just stay stuck in comfortality, right? Come outside the box, come to the dark side. We have cookies. <laughs> The darkest dark, guys, is the brightest light. It's the Divine Sorcerer here. And like I said, this is my life, my story, my video. I live it. I love it. And I'm not going to stop it. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next video. Who knows? We might have pomegranate. We might have the history behind the cross. We don't, we don't know what we're going to have yet. But I'm sure it'll be good. All right, till then, love you guys. Peace out.